Hello and welcome to the Certificate of Recognition Health and Safety training session. The Certificate of Recognition program is a WorkSafe program that reviews all the health and safety processes that an organization uses and ensures that they match WorkSafe standards. There are a number of aspects to it and your health and safety committee has been working diligently this year to ensure that our procedures and information are correct and compliant. While some of that work has been behind the scenes, there are also some things that we all need to know as a staff. The first is that this is an official training session. If you are in attendance at the staff meeting on March 11th, you will have received this training and signed off accordingly. If you are not able or not required to attend that staff meeting, you need to complete this training session and then sign off on the staff list in the office. This is required. There are three components to the Certificate of Recognition program that are significant to us today. Health and Safety Management, Injury Management and Return to Work Procedures, and the Audit. Health and Safety Management includes everything from our inspections as a Health and Safety Committee to providing information to you as staff, to first aid training, to responding to specific health and safety concerns. The goal is to have an effective, comprehensive program implemented and functioning to ensure that workers and workplaces are safe and secure from injury, illness and disease. The responsibility is to identify, assess and control risks to workers. This is done through a variety of means including health and safety meetings, building in classroom inspections, sharing of information, discussion of health and safety matters at meetings, and reporting unsafe conditions and near misses. This last is a very important responsibility of all staff members and we will address it more later on. Injury management and return to work deal with what happens when an employee is injured. This can be a minor injury such as a cut or a scrape all the way to a major injury that requires significant time away from work and medical treatment. The response in an injury situation includes reporting of the injury by the employee, receiving first aid if appropriate, the first aid attendant making a decision, that is that the employee returns to work or is followed up with medical aid or other, providing the return to work information to the employee. This is then followed by investigation by the administration, reporting to the district and to WorkSafe, and then the employee may follow up with a physician and with WorkSafe taking further action as directed. This process is designed to ensure that an injured employee is supported, that appropriate interventions are quickly carried out, and that the injury is managed and the employee is supported in returning to work as quickly and safely as possible. The application of the Certificate of Recognition Elements is evaluated through a standardized audit carried out by a trained manager in the district's Health and Safety Department. The audit itself consists of three elements, the interviews, a review of the site-based committee's inspections, and a walk around to look at specific issues. The interviews will take place on April 15th. The expectation is that one STA member and one QP member will be interviewed, along with the administration. The school-based health and safety committee is expected to identify staff members to be interviewed, though volunteers are welcome. The interviews will be about half an hour, and employees will answer questions from both the health and safety and return to work questionnaires. These will be provided beforehand. This present training session will also review the answers to all the questionnaires as all employees are expected to be knowledgeable about the district's health and safety program. In terms of inspections, the auditor will review the inspections that the school-based health and safety committee has carried out. The auditor will also conduct observations, doing a walk around to observe specific areas. One area in particular is the health and safety bulletin board that is up in the staff room and I do specifically ask that all staff visit and take a look at the board. Other areas for inspection will be discussed with the affected staff members, including first aid, science, and tech ed. At the staff meeting, a handout was provided on hazardous materials. This information is also posted on the health and safety bulletin board in the staff room and is available on the hub. More on that later. If you work with hazardous materials, and again, this applies generally more in areas such as science, tech ed, and art, then you do need to know this. Our next slide is the MSDS fetch information and the process for getting information about any hazardous material that you work with or that you may be exposed to is through MSDS fetch which allows access to material safety data sheets either online or through the Faxback service. The other place to get information on hazardous material is on the product label which may be supplied either by the manufacturer or the employer. This label should include specific information such as the real name of the product, how to protect oneself from any hazards, and how and where to get more information. 
There are four questions that a WorkSafe officer would ask, which means that these are questions that you should ask yourself before using the product. The first question is, do you know the hazards of the product you are using? Do you know how to protect yourself from the hazards? Do you know what to do if there is a spill? And do you know where to get more information about this product? These next three slides are a summary of the questions that the interviewer will ask on the day of the audit. And while the appointed staff members will need to answer them, it's important that all staff are aware of the answers to these questions as well. So we'll now go through the questions individually. The most important question is, where do I find information? And the answer frequently is, the hub. But of course, you need to know where on the hub to find it as well. For us, this information is included in the virtual staff room. As a staff member of Johnson Heights, you are part of this group. When you sign into the hub, you have several tabs across the top which include me, my groups, my school, etc. Click My Groups and go down the list and you will see that you have been automatically included in a group called Staff Room. In the Staff Room in the bottom right hand corner is a section called Shared Documents and there you will find quite a lot of information. One document there is the Staff Handbook called Handbook and in brackets Latest One. If you click this it will open the Staff Handbook for you. Now rather than read through every page of the handbook or even the table of contents, if you know what you are looking for, you can use the find box on the toolbar. This will allow you to type in a word or a phrase that will give you a list of all the places that word or phrase appears in the document. In order to find information on health and safety, I've typed in the word health in the search box. When I click the enter button, a list of all the places the word appears shows up below along with the immediate context so that you know whether the particular occurrence of the word is the one you're looking for. On the slide right now is a section of the handbook that deals with WorkSafe BC and WorkSafe BC procedures. These procedures detail the responsibility that an employee has under WorkSafe legislation and reads as follows, that an employee has the responsibility to be knowledgeable in the performance of their duties and to comply with district procedures as well as the WCB industrial health and safety regulations. Each employee must perform their duties in a manner that will not cause injury to themselves or endanger fellow, fellow employees, students, and or the general public. Employees should report all unsafe acts and conditions that they observe. Employees should wear approved personal protective equipment where required. Employees should report all work-related injuries to the supervisor and promptly notify the supervisor when equipment needs repair or replacement. The board supports return to work and selective slash light duty programs in order to keep employees connected to the workplace and to support them in their rehabilitation efforts to return to their pre-injury occupation in the shortest possible time. At this point, we will review the questions that will be asked of the employees selected for the interview. These questions are important for all employees to understand and know the answers to, and so we will review them here. The safety policy is located in the staff handbook and also in board policy 5206, reviewed in the last slide. The next question is to describe your health and safety responsibilities. These are the same responsibilities outlined in the staff handbook. Please review them again. They are important not because an auditor may ask us questions about them, but because they provide a guide to carrying out our daily responsibilities in a safe manner and guide us in how we respond when a situation is unsafe or when we or a colleague have been injured. Next question, do you believe supervisors lead by example? Um, and hopefully the answer is yes, both in terms of our own practice and in terms of the expectations that we set. Do you have access to relevant health and safety resources? All of this information, the Workers' Compensation Act, WorkSafe BC, Occupational Health and Safety Regulations, Company Safety Handbook, other documents, are available on the Health and Safety Bulletin Board in the staff room. And please make sure you go and check it out. Our office staff have put a lot of work into preparing this. You can also check out the WorkSafe website at www.worksafebc.com. Do your managers regularly discuss health and safety issues with you? And yes, we do. They're discussed at every staff meeting, at department head meetings when necessary, and individually or by department when necessary. Do we regularly share information with you? And yes, we do. One recent example of information is the fall videos, and these were shared before the Christmas break. Uh, several videos produced by WorkSafe on various circumstances where workers may be in a situation where they could have a fall. For, uh, say, like ours, falls are some of the most common ways that employees are injured on the job. Of course, in January and February, we were regularly discussing 
safety in the parking lot on the slippery walking surfaces. The procedure for dealing with health and safety violations. If you see a peer in violation of health and safety procedures, please provide guidance and assistance if necessary. If there is an accidental violation, then information, support, and direction are provided to address the violation. If it's deliberate, then direction is provided, and if it continues, then discipline may be enforced. Are the safety rules and regulations enforced? Yes, they are. Floors are cleaned immediately. Appropriate storage of chemicals is reviewed. When inappropriate stools or ladders are used, they are removed and inappropriate chemicals are removed. These are just a few examples of some of the ways that we make sure that we enforce and follow our safe health and safety regulations. Do you know where to find copies of written safe work procedures? You will find these some in the staff handbook. You'll also find specific procedures for your curricular area. For example, if you work with students who may have um, behaviors that put a staff member at risk, then there's a safety plan for that student and that will uh, is required to be reviewed with any staff working with that student. Science and technology education also have binders with procedures that detail how to be safe with any particular equipment or procedure. Safe work procedure information is provided on the hub for a variety of areas, including unloading wheelchairs, carving soapstone, communicable disease, hazard assessment, hazardous waste material disposal, and so forth, and a whole variety of other safety at work areas areas including cons confined space information, ergonomics, fall protection, flu and vaccinations, hearing conservation, indoor air quality, and many others. It can be found on the hub under the health and safety website where there are a variety of tabs and quick links that provide excellent information for employees. Contacting the first aid attendant. Very straightforward. Call the office at 2001 you may send a student to the office if you can't get to the phone and the occupational first aid attendant will be contacted and sent to uh, help you immediately um, and administration or other staff may also uh, attend the city. Does your supervisor communicate the hazards of your job with you? And yes, in terms of providing information, for example, about slips, trips and falls, about how to lift appropriately, about how to store heavy material on low shelves, not on high shelves, the importance of using ladders to get up to areas above shoulder height and so forth. For other areas that uh, you we also work with your department heads and provide support and assistance there. If you need PPE, PPE are personal protective equipment and these would be your gloves, your mask, your goggles, um, which again science, art and technology education all use and of course in tech ed other personal protective equipment such as welding masks are available and required for more specific activities. Have you been trained in the use limitations and care of the PPE that you wear? You should of course be able to describe when it should be used, how it's to be used, how to inspect it, and when it should be replaced. And many of us are not required to use personal protective equipment and so it doesn't apply. Another aspect of training would be include ladder safety. We've talked a lot about ladder safety. What does it mean? There's four simple things you can do to make your use of a ladder more safe. The first is to have another staff member help stabilize the ladder. The second is to make sure that you do not put your feet on the top two steps of the ladder. Three, always have three points of contact with the ladder, and this can be one, two feet in one hand, two hands, one foot, two feet in a shoulder, and so forth. And always keep your body center within the outside rails of the, la of the ladder, which means that you should not lean so that the midline of your body is outside the frame of the ladder. Is there a system in place for reporting sa unsafe or unhealthy conditions or practices? Yes, there is go to the administrator in charge of health and safety or any administrator um, or any member of the health and safety committee and then they take it forward and deal with it and address it. If you encounter broken tools or equipment you report that to the appropriate staff member or administrator make sure that you label it appropriately such as a do not use sign. Um, if it's electrical the cord must be unplugged and tied so that it cannot be replugged in. Um, if there's specific equipment in your area then you also should make sure that you know the process for dealing with that equipment and if you don't please talk to your health and safety committee. What safety training have you received? And there's a variety of different uh, training topics and training methods. It can be in the classroom, it could be a one-on-one, -on -one, it could be a staff meeting. Some examples um, would be asbestos sessions, nonviolent crisis intervention if you're an EA working with students who are potentially uh, physically violent, first aid training, our reviews of winter weather parking lot safety, how to prevent communicable diseases, women's training, emergency response training, which includes our fire drills and code red drills and evacuation drills, 
um, the web-based safety orientation, the new employee orientation, ergonomics, and so forth. So there's a whole lot of different types of training you may have received. Do we ever have tailgate or toolbox meetings, on-the-job pre-planning meetings? And again, some of this is starting to you know, repeat itself a bit, and that's okay. Some of these may be safety plans for students or staff meetings, or if there's a particular situation or need, then those are addressed individually. If you're a new employee, did you receive an orientation during your first day on the job um, or in your new location? And yes, you would have received that from Carol Goodwin. The accident injury reporting procedure. If you're injured, report to first aid. If there is an incident, please report it immediately, and the administrator will address and ensure that the situation is safe. You, as the employee, report through the employee incident injury report form, and then the administrator investigates any work orders are produced, any recommendations or changes in procedure are made. Have you ever been involved in a near-miss incident, which could have resulted in injury or damage, um, but it did not? And did you report it? And please do. These are very important because even though you didn't get hurt in that situation, the next person might, uh, might not be as lucky. Are the results of incidents and accident investigations communicated back to workers? Yes, they are. The employee gets a copy of the employee injury incident report form and issues with areas where we had in the past, for example, where we had rodents in, uh, in certain areas or there were air quality concerns are discussed either at staff meetings, department meetings, or directly with the staff members that are affected. Do we hold regular safety discussions with you and your fellow workers? Yes, we do, at the staff meetings, department meetings, and in one-on-one -on -one discussions. Is there a written stay at work, return to work program? Of course, there is. And the stay at work or return to work policies will have been communicated with you on an as-needed basis when a staff member is injured. But the important thing is to know that there is a supportive program in place for our staff who have been injured. If you have been injury, injured, then updates are provided on new information and progress, and this is often done in conjunction with the uh, district um, and, and your supervisor as well. If you were injured on the job, you should also have received a stay at work or return to work package either from the first aid attendant the school or through the district. And that brings us to the end of this training session on the Certificate of Recognition program. If you are looking for more information, you can go to the Surrey Schools website under Health and Safety. You can also go to the WorkSafe BC website. If you have specific questions about health and safety at Johnson Heights, please contact me, Rob Killowy. You can also talk to any of the members of our Health and Safety Committee, which is Ms. Goodwin, Ms. Demwell, Mr. Post, Mr. Bailey, and Mr. Jupp. Thank you again for watching.